very much. And, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be with you tonight on this important and I agree much, much too little talked about subject. A, a very big, very big issue. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, that should be that should be better. I'll go right to the uh, the topic at hand, um, and I've broken it and I got the uh, previous uh, introduction kind of went to one of my points, but I've, I've broken it down into two questions. Uh, and the first is, was the decision in 2014, I guess it was, or the 2014 by the BC government, and let's not mix up BC Hydro and the BC government too much. If you know what's going on, you know BC Hydro is run by the BC government these days, very hands-on. So I'll refer to generally as the BC government, but some reference to Hydro. Was that decision, that original decision made three or four years ago, was it a justified, was, 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 it, was the decision justified to proceed? And secondly, knowing the answer to that, is continuing the project after spending more than one and a half billion or more uh, justified here at the present time? And there are, those questions do need to be divided. Uh, the first of all, well, the 2014, 2014 decision was, I think we should all agree, seriously flawed. Uh, there's a couple of uh, broad reasons for that. One is it did not receive the kind of due diligence that any project that is kind of a business community or anywhere else that's investing in handling money, but much, especially public money, it did not receive the due diligence, the kind of examination that it should have received. And you'll know the government took Site C out of the requirement that it be reviewed by the BC Utilities, Utilities Commission, which was the body and is the body that should rightfully have examined whether or not this project was viable and in the, in the interest of BC and BC taxpayers. The second reason that we can say is because um, not only was the process flawed, but the actual analysis was done by the government and by BC Hydro uh, was flawed. And there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, and and I, when I say in saying that, I'm saying it did not really make sense at that time in 2014 to proceed based on good analysis. Uh, reasons for that. The alternatives were not fully considered. That's been noted by a number of people. And that's elementary. I teach public policy analysis, project analysis. That's elementary. You consider the alternatives before you proceed with one favorite project. Uh, demand side management. By far the best investment that can be made, and I won't get into why that's equivalent to investing in power sources, electricity sources. Demand side management was essentially uh, undermined both in terms of putting it in its proper place in the, in the hierarchy of projects. It should be the number one project. And not only was it ignored, but it, the money in demand side management was taken out. And so we could have taken off the amount of power that, that, uh, that Site C is going to produce, taken it off the system, providing that replacement power cheaper, more effectively through good demand side management. Uh, other reasons, um, the uh, uh, projected demand for electricity was, let's call it optimistically estimated. Um, one of the reasons I think it came out from under BC uh, the Utilities Commission is the BC Utilities Commission would have demanded a very rigorous assessment of the future markets, the demands, the needs, the prices, the opportunities to sell uh, electricity. Uh, if you go through all the analysis was done, you can tell that the analysts were trying to try, stretching to, to be optimistic about what kind of uh, markets there were going to be and what kind of need there was going to be for electricity. Uh, there was no consideration, real consideration, and it relates a little bit to the options. There was no real consideration of the changing technology of electricity production and distribution. These were not seriously considered. And this is becoming a rapidly changing uh, area in which these, these kinds of sites, these kinds of projects, these billion, $10 billion projects, could very well turn out to be the dinosaurs of the electricity <coughs> industry in, in 10 or 15 years. <coughs> Uh, the timing and the, pos uh, 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 the timing of uh, possible and future electricity uh, uh, needs and, and utilization and so on was wrong. Not only did they get the overall assessment wrong, but they got the timing wrong, and that is very important in assessing when you should build these projects or whether you should build these projects in terms of options that are coming up down the road. All of these are fairly elementary and basic. They should not be. We should not be standing up here uh, having to consider whether or not what I've just said is 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 true or correct. Uh, these are not really debatable. There are other things about the way they assess the project which, you know, are a little bit softer, but all worked in favor of the of the project. Um, there was a, 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 a desire to believe that because hydro is clean energy, this would act as a as as a replacement for uh, dirty energy being used. And yet, in the in the in what we've seen happening, we're going in the other direction. Uh, LNG has been already mentioned. There was a kind of belief, not really calculated but belief. You know, LNG is coming. We're going to need electricity, and uh, that will be that will become a kind of justification. You can tell in the writers. 
Um, they, uh, they thought that a regional grid might be coming. No one ever said this, but I'm seeing that appearing now, you know, connect up with Alberta, Alberta's getting out of coal. This will, there's no sign of a regional grid coming, and no sign of a connection uh, uh, coming at all. Um, these are all sort of be beliefs, soft beliefs, which should not enter into a careful calculation and careful review and a careful decision with respect to spending $10 billion. What do we make of this? Well, mismanagement on a colossal scale. Uh, no, uh, no uh, industrial sector, no major producer in the industrial sector should perform in this sort of way. And it was primarily, I would say, without doubt, uh, the role of the hand of the government that led to this conclusion. They wanted Site C. They wanted it for political reasons, and they even brought in a CEO. The CEO is a kind of last, uh, last uh, uh, protection against bad decisions being made by the owners, in this case, the government. They brought in a CEO who would not challenge the government, who was there to do their bidding. Uh, so we have here uh, a political decision that was very badly made, and for that alone it should be uh, condemned. Now the second question is the one that was mentioned, um, and, and that is, given that the decision has been made, and given that we've spent and committed how many billions of dollars, some of you have got the numbers, but I see different numbers, maybe we've spent a half, one and a half billion and we've got another one and a half billion committed or something in that range. Uh, given that that money has all been committed or spent, it's gone, should it now proceed? The reason I ask this question is uh, in, the, in the world of economics particularly, that money is spent and gone. And so now a decision, a new decision is made. Should we proceed now? And we don't, cons and, 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 and in doing so, you consider what the returns are going to be uh, relative to what you commit to now. So you take three or four, three billion, let's say, out of the cost equation, out of the capital cost equation, and then you calculate the return on the remaining uh, six or seven billion. And that improves the economic justification uh, tremendously. Uh, and I know that's going to be debated here tonight with more reports and information than I have. Uh, I think the best we can say is in pure economic terms, it probably comes out to being uh, an even balance or a little bit against proceeding with the project. But there are other reasons. This is not a good way to, to, to proceed now is not a good way to encourage a government to behave. There should be a cost for the kind of behavior that this government engaged in the way they use taxpayer dollars. That's an opinion, not necessarily a, a, a foundation of analysis. The, uh, the, the, but the, the second thing I'd say is there are other considerations here of the type that I talked about, they did not consider. We don't know the numbers, even taking the reduced cost base, writing off the money that's already spent, uh, doesn't really convincingly, as one of the speakers tonight will tell you, uh, justify proceeding with the project. It can be argued. I see people arguing for it on that basis. But there are other reasons as well. Um, some of you will have heard of the precautionary principle. Uh, and under the precautionary principle, when we destroy valuable natural resources and systems and ecosystems, we don't proceed if we aren't sure about the, what the effects are going to be. We wait until we can be sure about mitigating and handle the, handling the effects. We see agricultural land being destroyed, trees being destroyed, First Nations treaty lands being, uh, being uh, flooded and taken away from them, all kinds of things that can't be fixed if we go ahead now. And we, if we stop and take a good hard look and ask the hard questions, those questions uh, still can be, can be answered. There's a very good reason why we should stop now, reconsider this, ask for the BC Utilities Commission to review it, review it on both bases, the original estimates based on the 2014 time period and review it on the basis of the investments now, take into account all of these different considerations and then we should have clear public reporting and then we should have clear public debate. That's the only way to resolve what is uh, a flawed project that is being uh, pushed upon us for political reasons, which is not an acceptable way to spend $10 billion of people's money. Thank you.